This week's chapter of My Hero Academia is another short one with this chapter coming in at or around 11 pages, but a lot happens as we get ready for the end of the Todoroki story. One of my commenters let me know that every time there's a 90 in a number for My Hero Academia chapter is like 190, 290, 390. It's always paired with an amazing moment between Dobby and Endeavor or Dobby and the Endeavor family. So I honestly think that the reason that this chapter feels like such a setup chapter is exactly for that reason, right? Because Horikoshi has some numbers that he specifically wants to reach with certain events in the series. But regardless, My Hero Academia Chapter 389 is titled Relief and Prayers, and it's going to be following the Todoroki family and pretty much everything going on of them picking up immediately from the events of last chapter. However, we do get a really nice color page with Toga and Ochaka battling, who we will see for a very short period in this chapter. So according to Rukasu, the chapter begins with the explosion happening and the comps in the HQ saying that the speed of the temperatures increases slowed down, but this doesn't mean that they managed to stop the explosion because the temperature itself has not gone down. Now, if you don't remember what we're talking about with an explosion, of course, Dobby is going to explode because his body temperature has reached such a high limit. And although the Todoroki family members are there trying to do their best using their quirks on him, it seems like they're not really able to stop the explosion from happening because it does begin in this chapter. We see several rays of light actually leaving Dobby's body as he starts to break apart and actually begin to explode as Endeavor and the other Todorokis are standing there. And that giant like fire bubble that's been around Dobby for the last couple chapters actually starts to expand and grow even more as we see light shafts spreading from all around it. We see Rei, Fuyumi, and Natsuo using their eyes to protect themselves and then it cuts to Dobby's point of view as he's looking at Endeavor and thinking everyone is looking at me. Oh, so that's how it feels. If it was such an easy thing to do, then why didn't it happen sooner? And Dobby, of course, is thinking this as the entire forest around him is literally getting blown away. We see trees flying in the air, evaporating into a fine ash, as Natsuo, Fuyumi, and Rei all stand on pretty much the outer edge of this giant fire bubble, using all three of their quirks together, all shooting out ice at Dobby to try and cool him down as much as they can. But at this point, it's really become just a battle for them to defend themselves, as their ice isn't necessarily reaching Dobby all that much anymore, since he is kind of in the air of Endeavor, and now all their ice is more so being used to block them from the massive power of this fiery explosion. And on the page where Dobby is thinking about how easy it is now that everyone is actually keeping their eyes on him, we see Dobby actually making a really calm face, at least in his head, as he looks at Endeavor, who's like an inch or two away from him, right in front of him, taking the full brunt force of Dobby's flames. And on the page, we see the flesh from Endeavor's face is literally being blown away, right? It's being burned off and flying off in the distance behind him because of course Endeavor doesn't have the benefit like everyone else here of having an ice quirk. It's at this point where we see Dobby who's been barely holding himself together this entire time actually cracks. We see a large crack appearing on Dobby's face or at least in the mental version of Dobby's face and as that happens the outlines on the page around Dobby's panel get really really scorched up and drawn really rough showing us the violent force behind what's about to happen as nearby the bubble right outside of it we see one of our Pussycat Dolls Tiger from season three of My Hero Academia actually warning everybody to get away. Tiger tells all the heroes to evacuate and we then see that Uraraka is still fighting against Toga in her Twice form. And on the battlefield, we do see a massive swarm of Twice clones. There are still so many Twice clones that they can still form a big wave to crash down on some of the other heroes. And on this battlefield, we see Twice clones holding heroes down and like punching them out or piercing them and taking them out of the battle as Tiger gets completely overwhelmed by the Twice clones, but we see Ochako still dipping and diving through all of them as she uses her cords and her quirk to pretty much avoid all the damage that she can while she's locked in this one-on-one -on -one battle with the actual Toga. Tattoo, 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 tattoo holds Kendo's hand to make her run faster to get away from the shelter that was collapsing. And the Masagaki kids who were the kids that Shoto and the Shiketsu High students watched during their remedial license arc training are all actually being held by many different UA robots and they're all looking at a tablet watching the battle live as it's being recorded by a nearby helicopter. And it's important to note that everybody is freaking out in this chapter, right? Everyone is absolutely trying to get out of Dobby's blast radius, but it seems like the only people who aren't freaking out at all, who literally aren't scared whatsoever, are the Masagaki kids who remember Shoto from his remedial license training and think that he definitely has all of this in the bag. And as we cut back to the giant large fiery bubble around Dobby, we actually see that helicopter 
helicopter that's in the air, providing the camera feed for those young ones who are actually watching on their iPads. And in the helicopter, we see the one reporter who spoke to Endeavor during My Hero Academia season six with the quirk that gives her really strange fingers. And at that time, she was complaining about how one of her family members was actually lost during the battle against the villains. With Endeavor telling her, hey, watch me. We're going to bring this all back. You can count on me, the number one hero at that time. And her really not feeling like that was enough. But now she actually is on scene in her helicopter watching Endeavor as he struggles to save all these people from the massive fiery explosion that's about to happen from his own son. Watching Endeavor actually put everything on the line and living up to that name of the number one hero. Elsewhere, far away in another shelter at another one of the hero program schools, we actually see the boy who screamed during the Endeavor versus High End Nomu fight, who was nicknamed Can't You See a Kid and pretty much became the poster boy for being an Endeavor fanboy. And that hasn't really ended despite all the controversy that Endeavor has been through in the series, because we see that the boy is still wearing his textbook sort of Natsu scarf that he has, but he's also now sporting an Endeavor tracksuit that looks just like Endeavor's old costume. On the page, we see Can't You See a Kid has actually gotten a little older, and he puts both of his hands together and actually starts praying for Endeavor and praying for the heroes to win this battle. And it's here where the chapter does a big point of view shift as we actually go from all the heroes and all the people that are in Japan all the way to the Philippines. And shout out to my Filipino watchers. There are a lot of you. You guys are the second most who watch my channel, and I appreciate it. So this week, Horikoshi shows some love to the Philippines by focusing on a specific character who's actually standing in the Philippines next to a cafe, watching this entire stream go on, specifically watching the Todoroki scream, and we see her also praying. But what's interesting about this character is it seems like this character also has all white hair and actually doesn't look all that different to Rei or Getin. So could this be another long lost Himura family member that was sold away and sent to another country? I'm really wondering where Horikoshi is going with that because it's really late in the series to start introducing more characters. Maybe this is just showing, you know, another random civilian, but I feel like it is really strange just cutting away to a completely different country to show one random civilian that has nothing to do with the situation actually praying for the situation. Maybe that just goes to show you how people are starting to actually have faith in Japan again after the entire world abandoned them, or this person could have some sort of link with the Todoroki family. Now it's at this point where we cut back to the Masagaki kids who say, hey, it's okay, we still have five PP man, which is a nickname that they have for Shoto. And the chapter then cuts to Shoto and Ida actually flying rapidly at the speed of sound probably on their way to Dobby's area as we see them literally just blitz past a small home with a tree. And as they go by it, we see that everything in the area gets frosted a little bit by the sheer cold being let off by Shoto and Ida as Shoto uses his ice quirk to actually create a construct for one of the first times in the entire series as he makes a fighter jet of ice around Ida to pretty much stabilize his running and let them go as aerodynamically fast as they possibly can, but also to cool Ida's legs to make it so he can actually last the journey all the way there. Now, this is a really interesting ability from Shoto at the very end of the series. It seems like he's awakening his quirk even more and more because this is something that we saw Getin able to do against Dobby in My Villain Academia's arc, but we've never seen Shoto doing stuff like making a jet out of ice or making different things like that out of ice. So who knows if he's going to start busting out ice dragons and all sorts of mythological stuff like that, or if he's going to stick to more modern day stuff like cars and streetlights. Either way, as Shoto and Ida finally hit the speed barrier, we see Shoto holding his hand against his chest, activating his phosphor ability, and it seems like Shoto finally arrives on the Dobby battlefield, because at the very end of the chapter, we get a nice double page spread of Shoto finally unleashing the ability from his chest, actually breaking all of Ida's armor that was wrapped around him, and it seems like he's getting ready to jump off of Ida's back right into the battlefield with Dobby. So next chapter in My Hero Academia chapter 390, it doesn't seem like we're on break, by the way, we're probably going to see the final conclusion of the Todoroki family story. If you're still looking for something to watch after this spoiler video, go check out my many shorts that I've done on My Hero Academia recently. We recently covered the new volume for My Hero Academia volume 38 and who's on the cover. And there's a whole bunch of trivia and a lot of stuff from the My Hero Academia spinoff manga, Team of Missions, which I've been covering a lot right now in my shorts. So I'll see you guys later. It's Pineapple. Check out the shorts. Please like this video if it kept you entertained and you hadn't watched the spoiler video by anyone else. And subscribe to the channel for more. It's Pineapple. Love ya. Peace.